After three years of intensive development, the top secret Seamaster prototype rolls out. It's the most aerodynamic seaplane ever designed. To minimize drag, flotation tanks are put out on the tips of the wings rather than underneath. The Seamaster is powered by four jet engines. To protect them from sea spray entering the air intakes, the engines are placed high up on the wings. One of its most ingenious features is how it carries its bombs. On the Seamaster, you needed to have a bomb bay that could carry a bomb the same way it would on an Air Force land-based bomber. But there is one critical difference. The bomb bay is in the bottom of the aircraft, and the bottom of the aircraft is a hull, and the hull lands on water. So the Seamaster has to be watertight. And this is the ingenious solution, a rotating bomb bay. It opens to release its lethal payload, then seals up again for landing in water. The design also allows for remote rearming out at sea. Mines or bombs can be lowered into the bay from above. This is exactly the kind of self-sufficient weapon system the Navy is looking for. A highly mobile and independent seaplane strike force, operating from any remote patch of water. At this stage, the Seamaster has not yet actually flown. But the Navy is so excited, they are already making plans to build 30 by the end of the decade. Having a highly mobile seaplane creates a whole new set of problems. If it can land anywhere, how do you keep it supplied? I mean, this airplane could just plop down on the water anywhere and hide itself in a cove or somewhere and be resupplied. So there was a lot that had to go into all this thought process, as well as the basings. Specially adapted ships will be needed for maintenance work and submarines to act as refueling tankers.